Good morning, good afternoon, traders. Uh, welcome to the uh, uh, DXFeed Bookmap webinar here. So um, we do this every couple of weeks and go over uh, a connecting Bookmap uh, to uh, U.S. equities uh, and trading U.S. equities uh, and the the competitive advantage you get um, uh, with the data visualization in Bookmap. Okay, so uh, that's what we're going to go over. Uh, and uh, risk disclaimer here. Trading equities futures uh, involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Bruce Pringle, a uh, trader for 10 years in a variety of different markets, uh, order flow specialist here at Bookmap, I lead the uh, Bookmap trading education and uh, with expertise here in uh, order flow and market microstructure. Uh, our Twitter handle, uh, at bookmap underscore pro. Uh, you can also follow us on uh, YouTube. Uh, just search for bookmap. And then uh, you can reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. All right, so let's get back to the title of the webinar here, Get a Competitive, competitive Advantage Now. Okay, so pretty bold statement. How are we going to do that? Uh, how we're going to uh, 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 deliver on that one by the uh, end of the webinar here. Uh, well, we're going to be able to show uh, uh, market uh, liquidity, uh, all of it, uh, the full depth uh, using uh, DX feed uh, book map. And um, at, with U.S. equities, that's going to be a real nice advantage for you. Okay, You're going to be able to see immediately uh, just at the beginning of the uh, uh, cash session or even pre-market, uh, you'll see where larger players are already starting to line up in the book, and it can really uh, start to outline your day, okay? So right away, uh, actually, we can deliver on this promise here in just a couple of minutes, to be honest. Uh, uh, but uh, we'll go through and uh, start to explain some of the elements here in the book map chart so you understand what you're looking at uh, and uh, start to uh, uh, understand the visualization and uh, how to read it, uh, and uh, that's uh, uh, the advantage you're going to get as well. Okay, by understanding the micro and macro structures uh, in Bookmap, okay, we're going to be able to read the algos, the larger players, uh, and uh, uh, we may look at a couple of um, examples of some traders here, but we're definitely going to jump in and look at the live market, uh, and we can also set some orders uh, to show that you can trade right from the Bookmap chart. Okay, now if you guys have any questions, uh, just uh, uh, ask in the uh, questions section there, uh, and um, I'll be happy to uh, answer them. All right, so uh, here's uh, here's Bookmap, and we're looking at Apple. Uh, and um, by the end of the webinar here, you'll understand uh, what all the elements here are, uh, how uh, you can start to spot some advantages here, uh, and start to anticipate where price might go. Okay, and the, let's just give an overview of what the uh, DXV Bookmap is. Okay, it's a trading platform. Uh, we connect uh, with DX feed uh, through interactive brokers uh, as well if you want to trade right from it. Uh, and um, uh, what Bookmap offers is unique visualization. We're software. Okay? DX feed is the uh, data that you'll connect uh, to U.S. equities. All right. So uh, now when you subscribe to Bookmap, though, uh, you and get the um, uh, DX feed. Uh, it also allows for uh, connectivity to futures and digital currencies. So there's three types of markets that we will connect to. Okay, and um, the data for the uh, digital currencies is free. For futures, though, if you want to do that, uh, you will need to provide the data for uh, uh, your futures uh, futures uh, data feed. Okay, so uh, we'll kind of um, gloss over this one here. Um, uh, how many of you use a dome? Uh, and um, uh, just uh, continue to move on here uh, and start to talk about market data, okay, and the importance of market data because it's really uh, looking at the uh, uh, triangle over here, the pyramid. Uh, data is the foundation, okay. Based on data, uh, we're going to extract information, okay, and that information that we get from the data uh, is going to allow us to start to make conclusions uh, and uh, and build knowledge. Okay, when we start to build that knowledge and put all the pieces together, now we have wisdom, and we can start to anticipate uh, uh, movements uh, and uh, and put all of those pieces together. Now, traditional charts out there, 
uh, they're only showing really about 10% of the data. Uh, they're just showing executed volume, okay? And uh, and and the data is, um, the visualization of that data is all aggregated for the most part. Uh, even footprint charts, whatever it is you're looking at, you're looking at some sort of aggregated bar of data. Uh, and uh, that really dilutes, uh, you know, the, the specifics uh, in the order flow uh, that uh, you, you just won't be able to see it. Uh, you'll just see the candle go up and down and back and forth, you know, for, uh, uh, you know, that, that time period, volume period, uh, you know, whatever the period might be. Uh, and then uh, and then a new bar starts. Well, there's all sorts of stuff within that that we really want to know uh, and understand and, and derive uh, uh, knowledge from. Uh, and then uh, a lot of times the uh, tr traditional charting platforms, uh, they try to make up for that difference with a lot of indicators and studies, which are derivatives uh, of price, time, and volume. And we don't do any of that. Uh, we, we do have uh, indicator um, uh, indicators that you can get, um, but uh, the, the data that we're showing, it's um, uh, extremely objective. It's actually very straightforward, uh, but it's showing the complete picture through uh, historical best bid and offer uh, the um, uh, trades or the transactions that took place on that historical best bid and offer. Okay, that's the uh, the executed volume. Okay, and then the the non-aggregated data is through that uh, just best bid and offer. Okay, so it's not uh, it's just best bid and offer over over history. Uh, and then the biggest piece here uh, that most platforms miss uh, or don't provide is the full depth of market. Okay, not only for the current market, a lot of them will do that with a dome, their depth of market, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the price ladder, uh, but they, they don't do it historically. Okay, so Bookmap does it for both. So uh, you're basically, you're getting all of the data there, 100% of it, uh, compared to uh, just traded volume in an aggregated uh, period. Okay, so uh, the period was showing there, or the, um, the pyramid was showing, uh, the data makes a difference. Okay, if you don't have good, um, Good data uh, that that the base and the foundation is 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 pretty bad. Okay, it's garbage in and garbage out. Uh, so a DX feed book map uh, it covers all U.S. equities. You get that full depth of market, which I'll explain if uh, if you're new to that. Uh, and then um, uh, very low latency. There are servers around the globe, uh, and then um, uh, you have some choices too. Okay, so. Uh, with uh, equities, it's a little more complex than futures market uh, in terms of all the different uh, data providers. Okay, so uh, we're offering uh, through DX Feed, NASDAQ, Total View, and Last Sale, as well as EdgeX, which is which is BATS, or you can get the combination of both. Okay, so looking at stocks, uh, here, here's your, your regular dome. It's a little different than those uh, for futures, uh, but uh, this is showing the top of the book and the depth of the book, okay? So uh, on this side here, uh, we have the, uh, the bid, and this side over here, we have the ask. And uh, this is the best bid and offer right here. Uh, you know, this, the spread is, is uh, two uh, cents wide. <laughs> We're looking at Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. I just grabbed it from the web. Uh, but... Um, uh, yeah, they're bidding here at 24.64, and uh, the offer or ask is at 24.66. Okay, and you can just see the depth of market here at each price level, and then you see the number of shares here that uh, they want to be sellers uh, with these numbers of shares here. Okay, and you can also see the uh, market participant here as well. Here's EdgeX and here's Nasdaq, for example. All right, so that's the uh, the dome, uh, and uh, <laughs> the dome is great uh, because now you can start to see the auction, uh, and the auction is important to understand. Uh, you're able to optimize your entries and the exits and, and your trade management. You're able to see the larger players, uh, and uh, the professionals are looking at this. So we want to access that as well. Okay. Now let's compare the dome and book map uh, with the uh, dome for uh, for equities, uh, typical dome for equities. Okay, so. Um, uh, we uh, follow more of kind of the futures uh, dome or depth of market. Uh, it's, it's laid out a little differently. So here's your top of the book, okay, with the best bid and offer. Here it is in book map here, okay. So the red up here, uh, these these are uh, shares offered. This is your best offer. Uh, the green uh, rectangle down here, uh, this is the best bid. 
Okay. Now here is the, the depth here on the bid is what's below the best bid. These are all shares here that are uh, lined up uh, at specific price levels where they want to be buyers. Okay. And then the opposite here uh, on the other side for the, uh, for the offer or the ask. Okay. The disadvantages you get using the dome here, uh, this, this type of dome, that's the traditional dome, is there's no historical view. Okay, so when these numbers change and let's say the, there's more or less liquidity uh, that jumps into the book on one side or the other, uh, there's no record of it. Okay, so we don't know uh, what was there before and what kind of interest, how long they were there. Uh, what about other players? Were they starting to front run or, or were they pulling and adding behind it? Uh, all that kind of information, it, we just, you would have to, it would be very difficult to remember all of that and try to remember it for an hour. Uh, so, um, uh, that's the problem with the no historical view, uh, and uh, and due to that, uh, it's very difficult to read uh, the algorithmic activity, okay? Because th that happens very very quickly. It's also very tedious to read. We're looking at numbers and text uh, in a chart form here, uh, and um, uh, it it really kind of adds up uh, on your uh, um, you know the mental uh, taxation uh, by the uh, <laughs> as a few hours go by. Um, and then there's no there's no context here in terms of microstructure understanding. Uh, I mean, maybe you can start to visualize it like, uh, well, it tested up here and it came back and tested there again. Now we're starting to have a range form, but uh, we really can't see it. You just have to kind of mentally put that together. Uh, and especially there's no macro structure whatsoever you're, unless you're just looking at highs of the day, low of the day, et cetera. Okay. Now, the advantages in book map is uh, it, it shows all of that. Uh, in a quick graphical representation. Okay. And it's a consolidated feed here. Uh, the, the, the representation, let's go over it. All right, so we're looking at Apple here again. Uh, and uh, here's here's um, uh, the best bid and offer down here. Okay. And th here's our price ladder right here. And uh, we know that above here, these are sellers uh, with shares lined up to, to sell at these specific price levels. Okay. And we can see there's quite a few up here. Larger player looks like is up here at this area with almost 32,000 shares uh, to trade up here. So what we do is we take these numeric values that are in your depth of market and we transform them into a heat map. So uh, uh, areas of higher liquidity are going to be painted uh, in the heat map. So this orange area here, there's uh, 3,600 contracts here. Uh, or shares, and then uh, uh, one tick above, there's uh, 20, 2,200 shares, okay? And uh, you can see that it's uh, kind of yellow or beige uh, compared to orange here. So orange is higher, okay? Red is the highest. It's the highest amount of liquidity, okay? So that's the scaling in the heat map here. When the, when the numbers change here uh, in the dome, the heat map will reflect that change. See these striations that you see here in the market? Uh, in the historical market, that that's the adding and pulling of liquidity. So uh, uh, it's 2,200 shares. This is beige color. Well, there was more here earlier, and then it was orange over here. So they they probably had around 3,600 uh, earlier, but they pulled them. Okay. So you can see that this dividing line, this white line here, uh, is uh, what the current market is uh, is on the right hand side, and the historical market here is here on the left side. And we record all of that data. That's where this gets really interesting uh, because now we can start to read uh, the uh, the microstructure and then we can zoom out and look at also the macro structure. Uh, let's see here, uh, Lorraine, the, uh, the, the 40 uh, right here, this is the last traded volume. And the, the 40 in parentheses uh, is um, uh, how much, it looks like it maybe just flipped here and, and, and traded very quickly uh, to 186.27. But what this shows an aggregate view here. Um, you know, what, uh, uh, I'm sorry, this is the last one here is 40, but the aggregate view is actually the, the white number here. Okay, so let's say they continue to trade right at, at, at 27 here. Okay, well, you, you'll see that this number, maybe it'll be 20. The next, the next trade that takes place will be 20. This will bump up to 60. Okay, so um, uh, you can start to understand. Aha. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I, I understand that the, they're they're aggregating, uh, uh, or the, a lot is starting to trade here. But I can see each individual trade go through as well. All right.
you're welcome. Uh, all right, let's jump over here and um, go through the elements. Or did I go through? Uh, okay, let's see, uh, microstructure and then macrostructure. Let's see, as I get a little lost here. Um, yeah, this is the microstructure. We can go through here. So this is actually the same uh, chart. It's just uh, showing showing more data here. Uh, so uh, uh, from moving from this one on, it's the same chart. You just we're just showing more here. Okay, uh, and uh, let's define some of the other elements here. So we know what the heat map is. You know that's the the recording of the dome depth of market. Okay. Now the other two elements. That's one element on the book map chart. There's two more. Okay, the other one is this historical best bid and offer, current and historical. Okay, that's uh, the dashed lines here. Best offer is the is dashed red, uh, dashed green is the best bid, and it's just recorded here. Okay, so you can see this uh, red and green line as it goes back and forth, and that's just price movement uh, and uh, and the auction for that uh, uh, level one data. All right now, you can see the transactions on the level one. Okay. That's that's where um, the market buy orders. Uh, they take liquidity off of the best offer, and a green dot paints on the red line the best offer. Okay, a red dot would be an aggressive market sell order. Someone hit the market sell button, and they took liquidity off of the best bid. Okay, so this 40 right here, uh, someone hit market market buy for 40 shares. Okay, and uh, and then this dot is painted here. That, that's what that's what happens all right so you can see it's very very small little dot but it's only 40 contracts or shares <clears throat> all right so that's the aggressor uh, went through the uh, uh, the red bubble the green bubble uh, and then uh, best bid and offer and last traded volume all right now we can also start to see the uh, uh, microstructure here all right so uh, uh, and what do I mean by microstructure Okay, so I was alluding to it earlier. Uh, we can see these areas here of consolidation and then a break of that consolidation comes back up and tries to trade. It does trade back into this little micro range here, but they um, uh, was not able to hold it. Uh, in fact, you see some exhaustion here. Uh, nothing traded up here when it tested on the best offer uh, into this 86.42. And uh, it basically exhausts out and we find some sellers. And the sellers are actually able to bring it down below this swing as well. And they bring it down with some size. As you can see, the selling picks up here. So they hit the bid hard. And they test into this area here of high liquidity at 186.30. And they, they still have enough selling pressure to get it through below that area. And now they're testing into this 186.24. So those are the microstructural areas here. Little areas of consolidation and breaks of it. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, we see the move that tries to, tries to move back up, but uh, we can see that uh, uh, not able to, to hold it again, and uh, it just goes right back in the range here, creates this little trading range, and that breaks, uh, et cetera, okay? So now we're starting to understand, uh, uh, you know, price behavior within the microstructure, and not only by the traded volume, but look at the book, the historical book. Look how they got really aggressive here. They brought down, there's high liquidity up here. We know that, okay? That's been in here the whole time. But then this right here, this little orange uh, uh, rectangle uh, or square, uh, they um, they came in with pretty high liquidity uh, and it just popped into the book here uh, all of a sudden right on the best ask, okay? And no no buyer wanted that. They, they said, uh, you know, uh, no uh, and... Um, uh, we uh, we find some sellers, uh, you know, hit the bid a little bit, and then they they're still here. They're still aggressive here. At the same time that these guys are, um, well, these these guys actually added in uh, uh, here on the offer uh, a little bit later. But you can see here, just at the same time, this guy popped in. This guy down here did as well. It's probably the same player, uh, to be honest. But uh, uh, anyway, the um, uh, they're here uh, in the book, and they actually stayed in the book and traded. That's another distinction here is understanding what traded, what liquidity was was real and had the intent to trade, and uh, what uh, uh, liquidity uh, did not trade. It did not have the intent. Okay, these little areas here that uh, uh, we don't see any transactions or even in you know even close here uh, or here, uh, it's uh, 
dubious if they uh, if they have the intent to trade. Okay, this one actually is not a good example, uh, but some of these down here, like this this guy, he was in here for just a second, then he pulled his liquidity. Okay, so you know, uh, here's the distinction between like that liquidity that you'll see the numbers blip up in your in your dome, um, and then and it's just uh, it's just noise, right? And the distinction between that and then this real liquidity here that actually traded. So we know this is fact. Like this guy here is long the market, and it's and price is going against him. It looks like he's layering in though, okay? Layering at this level and wants to layer in down at this level, or these these players I should say, okay? So uh, that's a microstructure and starting to understand all the nuances here, and we're really starting to understand the market now, okay? But it's okay. We're you know this might look uh, kind of complex. Uh, it's actually very straightforward. It's just how the market works. Uh, there's no, you know, MACD or derivative or anything like that. It's really, it's those that are providing liquidity uh, and, and those that are, uh, are taking liquidity and where they're meeting. And here's that where they're meeting right here. Okay. Now we're looking at the same chart uh, just a little bit later here. Okay. We were looking at, let's go back one. We're looking at uh, uh, around uh, 186.27 was the last traded price there. 186.27 is right here. So we're looking at just uh, some seconds later, basically, or a minute later or so. Okay, here's our bigger picture. Okay, here's what's going on. Here's that little skew in the book here uh, with that higher liquidity that we just saw. Okay, uh, and then here's our, our, our 86.50 up here, those 31,000 uh, contracts or 32,000 contracts, they're up here. Okay, so you can see now what we looked at earlier, this view here uh, is, is very much microstructure, but we're also gaining a lot of insight here. We're seeing larger players getting filled on the bid. Okay, we're also seeing maybe a potential spoof here, lowering the uh, the offer here. Uh, and uh, uh, the overall uh, 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 slant of things, if we zoom out and take a look here, is uh, this is bullish. Okay, this is a pullback in this trend that's going to the upside. All right, and uh, you can start to look for uh, the market to be attracted to this high liquidity that you see here at uh, at 40, uh, and then at 50 here. Okay, that we we uh, those 32,000 shares. Now we're getting a complete picture. Uh, of uh, you know the the macro view and the micro, uh, we're able to use that dome on the much higher time frames, right? Uh, so uh, that's the example here. Uh, and now what that allows you to do is start to see some really good examples uh, in uh, uh, in the market when you start to zoom out. Like for example, here's a reversal, a head and shoulders pattern, shoulder, head, shoulder. But now in terms of order flow, what's going on? Okay, very high liquidity here. It trades. It actually trades through it, okay, but they come right back in again, uh, and uh, and they trade again. Okay, and there's still a little bit of selling pressure. It goes through a little bit, not much. It exhausts out down here, and we start to rotate back up. We start to find some buyers, and these guys still they come back in with more liquidity again. Uh, this is Disney at uh, 101 here, uh, and. Uh, uh, start to uh, see buyers starting to come in, and we really see the buyers come in over here. Okay, and uh, you can start to uh, anticipate uh, that uh, if there's a lot of buying pressure now, and the sellers have exhausted out down in these areas, that uh, we have the potential to come up and trade into 102. All right, and that target was actually met. But um, uh, anyway, uh, you can start to understand these areas here now. Uh, and maybe they line up with your technical areas as well. Maybe it's a pivot point for you. Maybe it's a, a fib level, whatever. Uh, just as long as you understand the order flow in context to your uh, larger technical analysis. Okay. So, you know, we have all sorts of great examples here of support turning into resistance, um, absorption, uh, Facebook absorption here. Uh, and um, uh, I'm not going to, maybe if we don't see any good examples, we'll, um, We'll come back into the presentation. Uh, we're going to go instead to the live market uh, and uh, and take a look at some of these examples and see what we can see uh, and maybe set some orders here as well because I want to show you that one-click trading. 
All right, so uh, before I do that, um, I do want to also show you uh, the uh, on our Twitter feed uh, here uh, because we saw this yesterday, and uh, so we made a, a tweet, uh, and I would recommend that uh, you you check it out here. Uh, just scroll down a little bit here, uh, and, and, and it's right here. Okay, so uh, in fact, I can I can give you the link here for it, I believe. Uh, let's see here. Share via copy link. That's what I want. Okay, I'm gonna put this into the chat for you there in GoToWebinar. There you go. So you can you can check this out. Um, and um, a great example of absorption in Facebook uh, yesterday. I mean, it was just beautiful. Uh, and I actually was on online with a client uh, and watched this play out in real time. Uh, and uh, anyway, if you want to understand some absorption, uh, this is a great example. All right. All right, let's jump into, into book map uh, and see what's going on. And uh, let's see here. Uh, in terms of stocks, well, I have quite a few open. Uh, let's uh, let's jump in and maybe take a look at uh, at Nvidia, or uh, I don't know something else that did, that catches your eye here that you want to take a look at. We have um, uh, Twitter, uh, we have Facebook, uh, we have uh, 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 VX, which is a uh, VXX, which is the um, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, volatility index there. Uh, Tesla, uh, SPY. Uh, we have oil, uh, Exxon. Netflix, uh, Nvidia, Apple, uh, and then uh, let's see, I also have uh, uh, Alibaba here. Alibaba, I was looking at it earlier, is uh, kind of bearish today, actually, um, compared to some of the other stocks. So if it's going up, the other markets are certainly going up. Yeah, don't know what uh, what happened here. Don't know the news. Uh, maybe they reported earnings or something, um, or have some bad news here. But uh, uh, pretty pretty bearish. Um, uh, not even able to make it back up to the swing high here from uh, nine after nine thirty. Well, let's jump into Apple. All right, and there's something here I want to show you. Uh, in Apple, okay, and and we'll define this this full depth of market that I continue to talk about, okay, and this uh, immediately I think will give you an advantage uh, in your in your trading just by just by knowing this, and this is a very simple thing. All right, here we go. Okay, here's here's nine o'clock. This vertical dashed line here. So this is all pre-market. Okay, let's zoom vertically a little bit. Okay, now obviously there's been nothing but bull bullish uh, activity here. Um, but uh, look at the liquidity here, and and this is the full depth of market. All of these levels up here are live at nine thirty you can see where the larger players are placing their limit orders. So you already know way, where they are lined up to trade. Okay, that's a really nice advantage and that's what full depth of market uh, allows you to see. Okay, look at it, 200 here. Okay, uh, uh, they've been in the book, very high liquidity here, like uh, uh, 56, almost 57,000 shares down here uh, at 200. We don't even uh, uh, test it uh, at the open. Uh, we see that uh, it, it immediately uh, uh, went to the upside here. Okay, so uh, it's, it's definitely supporting uh, above 200, and that's a pretty key figure here uh, in Apple. Okay, always looking at the round numbers, uh, especially in stocks. Uh, they're always the larger players are almost always at those levels, which is uh, really great to see. Uh, you can see here, like uh, at 203. At 204, I'm looking over here, uh, and then at, at the liquidity here, and then look at 205, quite a bit here at 205. It actually traded, and it traded through. Okay, then they're up here at 206, and it's struggling here uh, to try to get up above 207. Okay, so uh, 
uh, we'll see if uh, maybe we get uh, a boost here um, uh, and try to get the uh, price to come through this 207 area here. All right. Now, another thing here, like, uh, uh, so immediately, I, if there's any questions on that uh, regarding the full depth of market and the advantage you get right away, just from knowing this, like you can start to line your targets or uh, where you want to trade, some of the areas you want to trade with your technical levels. Maybe it's a FIB level for you. Maybe it's a pivot point. Maybe it's a, uh, uh, a trend line uh, or a horizontal line. Uh, if it starts to line up with your areas uh, where you want to trade, uh, then uh, uh, you've really got something here. Okay. Uh, and um, uh, anyway, that's a, a quite a, quite a nice advantage. Uh, the um, uh, areas here, like uh, at 205 here. Well, let's zoom into that because uh, we see a lot of transactions take place there. All right, so I want to show this because this high liquidity here traded. Okay, this is this is fact. We know this. Uh, uh, they're in here with, um, uh, you know, 55, 55,000 shares. It looks like. Uh, and uh, what actually traded? Well, we have our our volume columns over here, and we can tell you uh, precisely what traded here. Let's zoom in a little closer. Okay. So. Over 237,000 uh, con or shares traded here. Okay, and most of it happened here. There's some there's some selling here, um, but um, uh, most of that is buying, as you can see. Okay, like like nine tenths of it or eight and a half tenths of it uh, is uh, is buying. Okay, so all of these guys here that with this very very high liquidity, they actually transacted. Okay. And there were still more buyers, and we trade through. So the point is, is not to is to understand these areas of high liquidity. And usually, you know, it will uh, start to slow some so some of the price uh, down because you've just taken away some of the buyers. Okay. Now we're starting to understand these levels of liquidity and how it reacts with the uh, the buyers. Okay. And there was still more buying pressure, obviously, as we continued higher. Okay. Uh, but um, uh, it, it did slow it down, and we went back and forth here for a little bit. We came back up and found more buyers. Okay, and then we see uh, uh, this phenomenon called a flip in the book. Okay, well, very high liquidity. It's not much of a flip in terms of uh, liquidity, but uh, they were here on the offer, uh, and now they're over on the same same price level, but they're here on the bid, and they're at, at uh, twenty uh, uh, two two hundred and five. Okay. So now what was, uh, this is like act, acting very much like support and resistance levels, but you're um, getting that uh, advantage of understanding there's actually traders there who want to deal. Uh, and uh, and here they are at, at 205. Okay. So from the offer to the bid side. Okay. And, uh, and it held. In fact, not only that, there was even more uh, buyers uh, starting to bid up even at a higher level. Okay, and did not trade through that level, All right? So here they are on the bid, uh, and again, like like uh, that kind of absorption uh, example. Except in this instance, we didn't even trade into it. Okay, a lot traded here, but uh, we didn't even trade into this area here where the high liquidity was. I mean, we see 14,000 14, shares uh, uh, transacted there. In fact, we have an iceberg detector here, which I can turn on. We're probably going to see an iceberg right there, and indeed we do. Okay. Why did I think that? Why did I, I think that our iceberg detector might show uh, a high iceberg uh, orders going off here at, at this area? Okay. Well, it's because here's the liquidity. It's down here. Okay. But the, the larger player here is actually not showing his liquidity in the book with an iceberg right here at this area. Okay, a couple ticks above it at at uh, uh, at, at 205 uh, 12 uh, is uh, is where the icebergs actually occurred. You know, 15,000 of them here. All right. So anyway, the point here uh, is um, really, really starting to understand some of the uh, subtleties here and uh, uh, what's going on in uh, uh, the order flow at some of these levels. 
Okay, so we never traded into and never tested this area here. Uh, and uh, we just we just found the larger players with some of those icebergs. Okay, I mean, there's icebergs all the time, uh, but uh, uh, that one was rather significant. Okay, so um, anyway. So let's take it off here for now, just to make the chart simpler. Okay. All right, and the move on up. Uh, again, targeting high liquidity at 206. Okay, it comes right up into it. We see a little bit of a, it, it, it goes through it, but uh, again, same same concept again here of uh, what was uh, resistance. Uh, it kind of turns into support here at 206, and we continue on up to the upside. Okay, and to go right into 206.50. Right up there. Okay. Now we now we do find some sellers, uh, and they do hit the bid, and they start to trade through these areas here. Okay. Uh, and where do they go? Uh, they trade right back down to where we initiated from down here, as you can see. Okay. Right, right down to it. This is where the buyers broke out uh, to the upside, and you would you would um, anticipate other buyers to show up down here as well. Okay. And they and they did. Uh, and uh, and now we're accepting above this uh, <coughs> this 205.50 area here, okay? Uh, and we trade through it though. Like uh, uh, we we had a little bit of bounce, we made a lower high, and we come back down and trade through it, back down into this area here, uh, and um, and buyers stepped in again. This, like uh, you can see the uh, the aggressive buyers here. The, the you know, these large buy dots here or green dots here pulling that market higher up into these areas of higher liquidity. Anyway, let's get to some of the current market. Those some of the basics here of going through and understanding what you're looking at uh, and uh, putting this context together of the uh, uh, liquidity uh, and um, or the orders that uh, are resting and the orders that are aggressive and uh, uh, take liquidity. Others provide liquidity, others take liquidity. Okay. All right, let's see. We got our breakout here above uh, 207, okay, up to almost 207.50, uh, and then right back down. All right, well, usually this is what we do. We, we would anticipate, again, buyers to step in right, right here again. Okay. now this is something, we might see something uh, interesting here in the order flow because, uh, uh, the breakout wasn't so great here. We might find some sellers try to, and if they can, if they can get down below where these buyers initiated right here, okay, if we and we can get some sell size, like big red dots here on the other side, well, then all of these guys are going to have to cover. They're going to they're going to feel the squeeze, uh, and it, it'll be the uh, the long squeeze uh, to the downside. So. Uh, uh, you know, maybe they would cover down below the swing here at uh, uh, 06.50, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, 58 or 60 here. And uh, so far, no. I mean, you can see we're bouncing off uh, out of that area here. We ha we still haven't really found the buyers yet. Now there we found some. It's not that convincing though. So, okay, maybe we're just going to kind of stay range bound here for a bit. Now they're bidding, they're still bidding down here though. That's good. That's, that's kind of bullish. Uh, and they're here on the offer up at uh, 0740. A nice little battle starting to emerge, both back and forth here, buyers and sellers, as you can see. I'm right, trying to get trying to get a bias here. Um, See if the uh, all right. It looks like a looks like some of that buying is starting to exhaust out a bit. Zoom in a little bit closer here. 
So we're going to see if they if the buyers take on these guys at, at 20 here and trade into. There they go. All right. So we found the buyers now. Okay, we're starting to break out a bit. Okay, we need to get we need to get a little higher than that. Um, okay, so this might be failed breakout. If uh, if if the sellers can get down below here, uh, then uh, we can see them uh, uh, try to get it down into uh, uh, 207 the figure because that's where they are on the uh, on the bid. All right, here come the buyers. All right, let's see the let's see them lift the offer higher now. And let's see them get into uh, 40 up here. Okay, and then uh, 50, uh, 207.50. Uh, that's we always like our uh, our, our big round numbers uh, in the equities. That's still kind of struggling uh, back and forth here. You can see, I mean, like uh, these rotations back and forth. Like if they if they just kind of exhaust out and then come back down, and we we get in these little kind of structural areas that we're still looking for a bias here. Uh, and um, uh, actually, the bias here for the moment now, since it exhausted out here on the on the sell side, or on buy side here, uh, right in this area here, uh, if we can get a little more sell volume down below here, around maybe 28. Uh, then, uh, then we can come back down and maybe test into uh, uh, ten or maybe uh, uh, seven here. It's not, it's not the cleanest uh, to look at because if the, you know, we're just kind of going sideways, and the, in, all, all we need to do is rotate back up and find buyers, and they can, uh, they can uh, lift this offer up into our forty area. Yeah, they're going to take it up to 40. All right, buyers, let's see you get to 50 now, too. Pop pop through 40 up into 50. Okay, big spike in volume there. Looks pretty good. Come on, guys, let's go to, let's go to uh, uh, 50. And if that's the case, what, what what would be the next level after 50? Okay, yeah, we're looking at uh, 08. Okay, 50 is trading. There goes 50. Okay, we have not gone through 50 though. Uh, seven, two hundred seven fifty, and we need to, and we need to get through there on uh, on some buying here. Uh, I mean, some good size in the, on uh, lifting that offer, and it's just not happening right now. Also reading these guys here on the offer, note how they're getting pretty aggressive. Um, you know, they're adding in here, uh, 54, 60.
All right, they just took it, they took it again at 54 here. Okay, more buyers. All right, let's see, get up to uh, 70 here, 60 and then 70. So we continue to climb higher. Okay, and then uh, next level after that is up here at uh, 90 and then uh, 08, the figure. Okay, nice move into 70 there. Any questions? Uh, you guys want to take a look at something else uh, that we have uh, up? But uh, yeah, I mean, it's still just, you know, uh, continues the uptrend here. Pretty, pretty strong uptrend. Um, you know, not quite as aggressive as this one here, but uh, it's uh, grinding higher and we're seeing a lot of volume up here uh, above our 50 level. So that's, uh, that's definitely bullish here. Oh, uh, concept of uh, icebergs. Yeah, in fact, um, we've got a page that uh, I can uh, I can send you to uh, regarding uh, icebergs. Uh, and then there's uh, plenty on our YouTube page as well. Oh, that's not it. I thought that was it. Hold on just a minute here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Now here you go. I'll put it into the chat. All right. Uh, but... Um, no, an iceberg order. Um, uh, think of it this way: um, uh, the um, if you have a lot of uh, uh, you know demand, uh, for example, you you really want to be a buyer, uh, but you you want to be a buyer at a specific price. Okay, well, if you show all of that demand there, like let's say it's just you know tens of thousands of shares, uh, well, that that may scare away the uh, the sellers that you'll never get transacted. Right, so uh, uh, instead, what they do is they use a hidden order, okay? And you can uh, you can go through that link there. There's uh, it, it also links to the the bookmap wiki that it, that explains it in in detail. If you really want to understand what the uh, iceberg uh, is all about, uh, and uh, I haven't seen anyone else describe it uh, as uh, as as well as this. So it, it really will go into the details, um, and uh, it's not that complex it's it's you know it, it may may seem like it but it's just let me finish this uh, uh example uh now we're starting to exhaust out guys see see the exhaustion here uh it, there there was more buying at higher highs there's no a lot less buying up here let's see if the sellers can hit the bid here uh and then maybe take it down to amount uh back down to 50 maybe uh here All right so uh uh we're, we're starting to we're just not finding the buyers up here Right, and you can see it clearly, right? So we start to look for where it might go and 50 looks pretty good, right? Uh, uh, that's a lot of volume traded down there before. Uh, obviously it's right here, okay? So looking for that move to 50 here and it's starting to play out. Um, all right, so uh, iceberg order, what it means is, uh, uh, let's go through that example. You have a lot of, a lot of uh, demand, or, you know, you have tens of thousands of shares that you wanna get filled. Okay, well, if you show all of those shares, uh, it will it'll 
likely scare uh, uh, sellers away. They don't want to deal uh, with you uh, because uh, you really want to buy. So they're going to try to look for a higher price. Okay. This is just very simple auction kind of theory. Uh, so, uh, but what if you can, uh, you know, have them kind of trade into your area and not show them in the, in the order book? Like uh, all of a sudden uh, you can kind of piecemeal it out instead of like showing 10,000. What if I just want to show like, you know, 500? Okay. So that's what uh, you can do with an iceberg um, order or hidden order is uh, a trade 500 and show only that in the book. Uh, but then the next 500 will uh, immediately load uh, right away. So uh, uh, you, you can try you won't have to show all of that liquidity in the book. Uh, you can only show uh, just a small portion of it. And that's the iceberg. That's the iceberg analogy there. Okay. So they're not pulling at all. They're staying in the book and they're transacting. They just don't want to show uh, how much they want to buy. Okay. Uh, straightforward enough. That's really the very basics uh, uh, <laughs> of an iceberg. Uh, there's, you know, you should, look at the page there and uh, I get some more information. All right. Well, not, not, didn't find enough sellers here. Uh, so uh, we did not get down to, to this uh, 0750 area here. That would have been the uh, a nice little target, but there's just, just a lot of demand here and the buyer stepped right back in and, and we've made a new high again, though, look at the, uh, that's better. There's more volume up here this time. Okay. It's, but look at the breakout here as well. Not, not so great. Not so great. Okay. And uh, they're starting to pull up here uh, at uh, this 90 level. But they're still up here at 08. All right. Well, if that's the case and we did not break out, let's see if we can get right back down to this uh, 60 level here uh, on that sell side. Okay. And where we need to see the sellers come in, it would be here, uh, just below this little area. Boy, it's really only four cents, but uh, uh, it's that, that, that same thing here. We're, 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 we anticipate buyers to show up here, and, that, and that's actually who is showing up. All right, yeah, it looks like they're going to sweep this. Um, we got another nice cluster of buying up here. We need to get a little higher and show a little bit more, just a little bit more, and then I think we can make it to 08. Yeah, looks looks good. Let's see them. Let's see them sweep that book, take all the liquidity, uh, and trade right up into 08 here. Yeah, we might need to rotate back and forth a bit, but we need to see more buy volume up here. Uh, definitely uh, to get that kind of price discovery to the upside. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> okay, any more questions? All right, guys, let's see this move into 08 here. It should, it should happen pretty quickly. I'm not looking for it to grind up to that. I'm looking for them to jump in pretty quickly here. Yeah, it looks good. Still, still looks good. Finding some sellers here, but uh, still a lot is trading up here. So uh, it's a lot of selling though. Oh, a lot of selling here. Look at that. Okay, selling just really picked up here. It 
still they're they're still you know lifting the offer here i'm still looking for 08 to trade and Nick, these these sellers here they might have to cover really quickly as well just shy of 08 All right, let's see if we can get a skew in the book here. Maybe they'll uh, uh, maybe show high liquidity underneath here uh, and then find some buyers react and uh, trade it right up into these 56,000 shares up here. Yep, still looking for it. Um, although, I mean, this is, oh, this is what the sell was. Uh, this was, I'm sorry. So this is what, uh, uh, you know, this took me off guard a little bit. I did not see a real big, you know, uh, a transaction up here. I was like, well, wait a minute, where did this big volume uh, 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 bar come from? Well, here it is. This is actually a dark pool. So the transaction actually happened way down here. Okay. So, uh, you know, we can kind of negate that then. And, uh, I just go with what we see here. That's a that's a not not too uh, uh, you know looking at I don't I don't trade a lot of stocks uh, so um, uh, I forgot about that. Uh, here here's the dot down here though. That's that big transaction. Oh God. Okay. I mean this is very typical. Um, uh, I you know. It's starting to exhaust out up here. We're just not finding enough buyers here. Uh, and there's a lot of front running as well. Uh, and that's very typical uh, that, uh, you know, you, you don't quite make it up into these areas. And what happens is we need to rotate lower to find those buyers and shake out maybe uh, uh, some of the uh, weak buyers. Uh, buy, buy from them and then have it rotate back up is, is pretty typical. Um, uh, and that's exactly why, to be honest, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, spoofing type of uh, uh, activity started to exist. That's why in this little area, I would have liked to have seen, here we go, this is what I'm looking for, right right there, okay? Uh, this uh, high liquidity here, okay? And see the reaction? This will allow it to push up into 08, okay? So the skew in the book and finding some buyers here. Right. That's what I was actually looking for over here. Okay, we need to see some more though. We need to see, there they are. They are there they are again. Okay, and now 08. Now we found the buyers here. This looks inevitable. It should trade into 08. Geez, where are the buyers? See, yeah, now I mean, this is see how it's just battling back and forth. Though now they're showing some size here underneath uh, 08, and we're finding a lot of sellers here. So they're trying to keep it from trading 08. Yeah, it still looks good. Now we're just a few ticks away. And let's see it. This is the rotation I'm looking for. This one looks pretty good. Let's see. Let's see them trade it. 
<laughs> just shy, just shy. Went up to, uh, I'm showing 97 is what traded here. All right, maybe one more rotation. But you can see like uh, how this, you know, really kind of what's playing out here. These guys at, 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 um, at 208 have been in here for quite a while, almost all day. And they're going to want to get filled. So they're going to try to, you know, make that happen. All right. Well, uh, let's uh, we'll come, we'll return back to this here. Uh, I, I just want to cover um, a few more things, and then uh, we'll call it a day here. Uh, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, saw some uh, some pretty good stuff. Uh, you know, making uh, some some calls and uh, uh, looking for a continuation there. Uh, that iceberg. We went over that. Uh, we uh, started to understand liquidity uh, context of uh, liquidity that's that trades. Uh, and uh, uh, with the uh, with the aggressor or or not, uh, and, uh, and and putting that uh, kind of context together, uh, just want to go to the uh, the DX feed uh, bookmap page here. Okay, I'm going to put this into the chat for you as well. So if you are interested, let's go over just a few of the options that you have here. Okay, so um, scroll down here. Uh, you can read uh, all about it here, uh, but then um, uh, these uh, steps here. Uh, three steps away from some uh, market clarity here uh, that we've been uh, demonstrating. Oh, I think 08 is, I just have the feeling here it's going to trade. Not yet. Interesting. All right. We'll, we'll take a look again. Um, anyway, this is what you can do. Uh, you get 14 days. Uh, oh, the one-click trading. Yeah, uh, Eric, I'll, I forgot to go over that. Um, uh, I, I'll show that as well, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. All right. Um, uh, anyway, uh, a 14 days money back guarantee here. Uh, so um, uh, sign up here. Uh, this is what you need. Okay. First off, you need uh, Bookmap Global or Global Plus. Okay. That's the so you need to get the Bookmap platform. The prices are here. Global is 49. Uh, Global Plus uh, is uh, includes all those add-on indicators as well as the one-click trading uh, is um, uh, $99 uh, per month. OK, so uh, those are the two options that you have. You'll need to select one of those. Right now, what you're also going to need is a data feed, uh, and that's through DX feed. And you have some options for this as well. OK, so um, uh, the options are NASDAQ depth, which is sixty nine dollars a month or EdgeX depth, uh, which is fifty nine dollars a month. Or you can get the combo. Okay, of both uh, uh, NASDAQ uh, together with uh, EdgeX, and it's 119 a month. Okay, so all together here, um, it, it depends on what package you want to get. Let's say you want to get NASDAQ depth, that's let's say 69 or 70 bucks a month, uh, and then uh, uh, Bookmap Global, so 50. Okay, so you're looking at overall at uh, you know about 100, $118 a month. All right. Okay, so anyway, uh, there's there's that, um, and uh, sign up there. Let us know if you have any questions. Uh, happy to uh, to help you out. Uh, support at bookmap.com, uh, and um, let's jump back. And uh, oh, there it is. Finally, finally, our follow through uh, on on big volume and and continuation here. Okay. Of course, it's like uh, boiling water. We have to like look away, and then it finally boils. Um, and it's still looking good. Uh, let's see if we can get back up into higher areas again. 40 and uh, and uh, 208.50. Okay. It's a. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it's two o'clock uh, after two. So um, if this trend is going to continue, I'm not seeing this. This volume looks good here, no question. Um, so I think we we may get to 40 here. Uh, we just need to see some more buy volume uh, come into the market, and it, and it is uh, looking pretty good. Let's see the swing here. Uh, if not, and we see sellers come in, the first area I'm looking for is like this little uh, kind of uh, area here, uh, and uh, see if the uh, buyers support it there. If not, then down here, 
uh, as you can see, they're already starting to come in at 08. Our same thing, what was uh, uh, support or resistance is now support, right? Okay, uh, the one-click trading. All right, so what you can do uh, is you can also trade from the bookmap chart. Okay, let's open that up, uh, and um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll input uh, 1,000 shares here. Okay, and uh, let's uh, you, we can use bracketed orders, or we can trail a stop. Uh, all sorts of things you can do here, okay? So um, uh, the uh, the one-click trading, the way it works, uh, trading right from the chart here, is you set your orders in this window, all right? Now, right-clicking is always gonna be a buy, but depending on where you are with current price, or, uh, uh, I'm sorry, left-clicking is always a buy, right-clicking is always a sell, okay? So let's, uh, let's see if we can get back down into maybe the top of this little area here. Wow, okay, there we go. That's I actually was kind of looking for that follow through like or a, a, a quick move like that. All right, and uh let's uh let's let's see if we can uh set a buy here. Okay, and let's see if we can get it come back back up into uh where it just dropped from. Okay, I'm gonna move my stop up. Okay, and uh, actually I'll move this stop up to 50 here. So I, I've, I've got 700 shares here and I got 300 up here. Okay, it's just touching it now. There it goes, so it transacted the 700 right there. Okay, now we're back up to where we just dropped from, really heavy drop here, right? Well, I'm gonna move my stop up then uh, to break even plus. Okay, so I have 300 shares left, uh, and um, uh, let's see if we can, um, if this was enough a shakeout below this area here. I, I like it. I mean, I like this move because we went down below 08, but we're right back above it here. And if we can get a little more, just right here, we can get a little more buy volume. This is a, a beautiful shakeout to come up higher up into maybe uh, 0850 here. And then wh why did I place my uh, 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 take profit right before it? Well, I'm front running, okay? So uh, I'm uh, uh, basically uh, not, <laughs> didn't wanna go through that pain uh, that we were waiting over here forever uh, for this move to take place. Anyway, uh, that's what you can do with the one-click trading. You can trade right from the chart uh, and uh, the, the trading takes place within an interactive broker's uh, uh, account uh, through DX feed. That's the only option that you have right now, okay, for the one-click trading to work, All right? Uh, the, now, one of the things, though, I, I just will cover this, and then we'll, we'll call it a day here. Um, the, uh, the one beauty about this one-click trading, uh, I think you guys will really like, I, I, I love it, is I can, I can see my actions here and I can rationalize my decision-making, okay? So let's go through it. What did I do? I, and, and, and what were my actions? It's all recorded on the chart, just like the liquidity, it's all recorded. So I, I jumped in here. We saw this really quick move to the downside, right? Uh, and I, I thought, well, all right, uh, that's um, a, a little too much, a little too quick, uh, you know, maybe spike below 208, the figure here. Uh, I'm going to jump in and try to get it right back up into where it just dropped from up here, right? Because I'm I'm uh, looking for uh, uh, this is kind of like a vacuum in price. If they're going to hit the hit the bid really hard like this, uh, then uh, we we uh, we can actually get a low volume pullback to right where it, it dropped from up here pretty pretty easily or pretty quickly. Okay, uh, and um, so I, I jumped in with a market buy order here. Okay, and I got filled on two different legs, one for 700. Uh, shares and one for 300. But here, here was my action. I immediately brought the 700 down to right where it uh, dropped from, okay, uh, and uh, and took some profit. All right, and then the the 300. Uh, actually, look what I did. I, I brought it down here uh, to uh, uh, this, just in front of this high liquidity here, and I thought, well, wait a minute. You know, that's uh, not so great. Like. Uh, uh, if um, if they can get it above on some volume up above this little area here, I I'm looking then for um, uh, maybe uh, uh, 0850 uh, to trade. 
Okay, so this is more like a shakeout move. Uh, and um, uh, so I, I, I moved it right back up to uh, where it actually uh, originally placed it. Uh, and then uh, I moved my stop up as well. Okay, so I moved it, I moved it up a few different times uh, to break even, and uh, then I've got a free trade on. Okay, so there's my actions, okay, and I'm being accountable with them, okay, because I can see it in front of me. Uh, and uh, I, I think this would, uh, well, it's, it's definitely helped my trading. Okay, I think uh, you'll, you'll find it helpful as well. All right, guys, uh, good session. Let's uh, let's wrap it up. We'll call it a day here, uh, and um, uh, we'll help, we'll hold another uh, uh, a DX feed webinar in a few weeks. Uh, and um, uh, other than that, uh, if you're interested in Bookmap uh, DX feed, uh, then uh, uh, come to this uh, this link here, uh, and I'll put it back into the chat for you. And uh, you can explore the different options that uh, are available for you. Okay. Have a good day, everybody. And uh, we'll catch up later. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.